Welcome to How to Play Bother by Stone Sour. Now we need to talk about the tuning first because this one is tuned down half a step to E flat minor. So I could do this in uh, three different ways. I could tune down my guitar and then play it in the normal E position. But you probably have a standard tuned guitar in front of you, so this is not that helpful. I could do it in E natural, like this. But then it wouldn't sound like the recording. That doesn't help either. So the best thing to do, I guess, is to do it on the sixth fret. And then we have that E flat minor, which has the disadvantage that we don't have the open, the open string at our uh, disposal. But yeah, what you gonna do? So now let's get into this. Um. It's the song is basically alternating between the E flat minor seven, six eight six seven six, and the D flat with an E flat in the bass, which is six 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 six. And in the intro, you have that little lick here. Which you should uh, practice with the bar finger present. So, you should practice that first, and then you can play the intro, which goes like that. you just use your hand to get that percussion sound right there. Okay, the verse is pretty much the same, even easier, because you just have the strokes on the words, which is like... Now this one is 98667. We'll call it uh, D-flat at 11. Not D flat sus four, which would be this. The difference is this one doesn't have a third in it, and the at eleven has a third in it, which is here on the eight. Not only an at eleven would have a seventh and a ninth and all that stuff, but let's not get into that theory stuff. Let's move on. So we got uh, to to cry. Then it goes back into the minor 7. And the lick after that is a little longer than the one in the intro. Just move down one string more to the D string. Second part of the verse is the same at the beginning. I, and now we have a difference to So from the add 11 We now go to the sus 4 uh, Because it just sounds more open than this one This one Okay, and all together it sounds like that Okay, that was the verse and we get into the chorus, which is more of the same, just less strumming and a little bit different in the middle. So it goes like You don't need to bother I don't need to be So there he goes to the B flat major and you have So always on the downs, the big downs is open and the others are muted. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Alright? 
and he plays two mutes before that I guess I just don't like to play them because it um, messes up the singing okay um, then we get back to the E flat minor seven keep sleeping, keep sleeping, father. but once I hold on to the second fret. Yeah, that's the same on the second and on the fourth. Fourth. Okay. So all in all, it would go like this. Chorus 1, we get into an interlude, which is like the intro. Thing is, there is some kind of cello or something playing a bass line that goes like... And we want to incorporate this into this one guitar version. So, the bass notes in the intro would then be something like this. little lick here it's important to end it on your middle finger so you have your index finger free to go into this um, B flat on the sixth string here like okay that is the interlude and after the interlude we have verse 2 which is like verse 1 except at the end it doesn't go immediately into the chorus but there's a little bridge part and this bridge part, if you play it exactly like he does, or more or less exactly like he does, then it goes like this. The thing is, if you play it like this, it's very hard to sing correctly to that. So you should more like try to do do what comes naturally with the voice instead of forcefully doing exactly what he does and then it sounds stiff. Try to do just with your right hand what comes naturally to the singing. So it's organic or not. After the bridge part comes the second chorus, which is like the first. You can do a little more with the right hand there with every new chorus, so it builds up a little bit. Not like you know, not every time like this you could do. You know what I mean. Just add a little more. Don't make it too boring. Okay. After chorus two comes the weird solo stuff, which might be the reason you're here because everything else you might have been able to figure out yourselves. But this one is really hard to figure out because actually it's a total mess. There's no real structure. Everything is there's there's no real rhythm in it. I don't know. Everybody does what he wants. And maybe this is what they wanted, to get the, some floating sound like that, okay. But if you really want to tap it out, it's terrible. It's really terrible. So I tried my best to make a version of that which is playable and has some sort of rhythm to it. The E-flat version goes like this.
So after the beginning, there's this part here, which keeps repeating. And this is probably the bass guitar, or I don't know. It's not the lead guitar, obviously. But the lead guitar has a lot of gaps in there where it's not playing. And he, as a one guitar version, you want to fill these gaps. So, so I try to play the bass to put the bass into that as well. Um, after that, this part is like the interlude, except for some lead tones here. The rest is like the interlude. And then into the second half of that solo, we use the bass again going into the lead guitar seamlessly, which would be like something like that. Um, so we go. Yeah, that's a nice part right there. Um, at this point, I think he has a bend in there, but how can you bend that and play the other note? Someone on working for me, so I just did it with the 1111 to 119, which sounds nice enough. Um, after that, a little quick one here on the uh, hammer on pull off 1113 to the 6, then a pull off on the 9 7 to the 4, then again the bass thing. Like the interlude. Okay, so at this point, uh, you really, you really start missing your open string, and because this can really make the the gaps fill the gaps. Um, the same thing played now in E would be like this, and then you really hear the difference. Especially at the beginning, when you have that. You can really bridge these these silence, silent moments. That's the, the advantage of that version. Um, but what you're gonna do? What you could do is you go out of the chorus too. Till it bleeds. You just tune down your E string half a step, and then you have it. Problem is, once the E string uh, has to be played again, you now have to put plus one on every fret. So this is the disadvantage. Like when you hear, you have this. Um, normally it would be here. So now you have to do. And here five, six, six, and stuff like that. You would have to tune it back after the solo, or play everything with plus one on the E string. It's possible if you want to try it. Do that. That would be a solution. Otherwise, just play the solo without an open string. Okay, after the solo, we have one more interlude, I guess. And then another verse, verse number three, going into another chorus, which is the same, except at the end it goes into chorus number four, where the voice goes up. I don't need to bother. I don't need to be, yeah. And so on. And here's where you really start to realize that it's better to have it one half step down. One up is. Don't need to bother. I don't need to be, yeah. If 
you're not the best singer and gets a little bit shrill there. So this is really the advantage of the E flat version. I think no, we're not quite there yet at the end. Hold on, so hold on. I'll never let down my deceit. You just stay on the D flat and then go into another round of intro or interlude, whatever you like. I like to play the intro without the cello notes there. Now and then you go from the B string just up to the 6 because you don't have the open one. If you were an E you could do the open one, but this will have to do. And then you're done. And that was How to Play Bother by Stone Sour. I'll do my version soon and then I put the link up uh, here. And I hope that helped. See you next time. Bye.